So this is Visual Studio Code. And if you haven't heard about it, so Microsoft has this editor to edit files of all various languages, and it's also available on multiple platforms. So you can run it on Linux, you can run it on Mac OS, you can run it on Windows. Um, so it, it, it's similar to other editors out there, such as like Atom.io, where you have cross-platform encoding. But then take a look at this, so if, if we can, there it goes. You can see this is Visual Studio Code and some of the code that we're going to be looking at today. We've got syntax highlighting, we've got line numbers, and I don't have to worry about the heavy overhead that I might see in, say, like an ISE. I'm not loading modules, I'm just writing code. I can focus on code. So the developer in me says, this is nice because it takes out a lot of the noise. It takes out things and I can just do this. But I can also open other files. So I could say something like, okay, maybe I want to see maybe like a, a Python file. So if I go to there, you can see, well, that's a boring Python file, but again, syntax highlighting there. Um, so what's nice about having PowerShell in Visual Studio Code is the fact that it's something lightweight. It's something for me to work with. Um, and I can run this on my laptop right now, which is running Windows 10. That is soon to be a Linux machine. I can run this on my new laptop that'll be here in a couple of weeks that will be running Windows 10. So I can run this on multiple platforms. And my Mac friends who give me a hard time about not having a Mac, they can run this too. Nice. Lou, what about it? Is this, uh, is this something that you're going to be adding to your, uh, to your desktop arsenal? Yeah, I think I have a so I have a MacBook at home, and I so like what I like to do is sometimes I'll open up a piece of code that send that somebody sends me or links to, and I can open it right in Visual Studio Code. I can look at my C sharp code; it's 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 um, formatted correctly. I can even make some changes and send it back. I can use uh, remote uh, compiling in the cloud um, using the new uh, um, compiler as a service. So I think there's a lot of power behind Visual Studio Code, even though it's a very simple. Uh, unzip and use sort of thing. So I, it, it works really well with PowerShell too. Like Sarah was saying, you can you can use it on Windows and then I can just immediately jump over and be using it in OS X. Granted, I can't execute the PowerShell scripts in on OS X, but again, I can still edit the files and redeploy them to a Windows machine if I wanted to. So it makes it really useful. So I think it's very powerful and it's very lightweight compared to just standard Visual Studio install that might take you 30 minutes to install. So I think this is a, it's a really easy package to kind of get used to. Last words to you, Adam, as a, an MVP. Is this something that you could see the PowerShell community embracing? Yes, I have actually had a, a couple of conversations with David Wilson, the guy on the PowerShell team behind um, Visual Studio Code. And one of the questions that I posed to him was, um, well, uh, how come you know this kind of came about? My, my, my original question was, you know, I, the ISE versus Visual Studio Code, where is that going to go? And um, he didn't, uh, you know, specifically tell me, but right now they're working on both platforms. So you will see more involvement in Visual Studio Code and also some enhancements and improvements in the ISE as well. And Visual Studio Code, from, the, from what I've used of it, it looks, it's really nice. It does the nice, you know, you're tabbing and indenting and you're, uh, you know, color highlighting and syntax highlighting and that sort of thing. It's a really nice tool. I suggest, um, you know, anybody doing... Uh, not just PowerShell, but there's a lot of different plugins in it that can uh, do the same thing as well.